Good morning. Um, I've got to be a little bit uh, shorter than I normally am, which is probably a good thing. I need to practice that. I'm actually meeting a fellow early riser for coffee um, this morning. So I won't be writing until later as well, but I want to do, we've got a cloudy sunrise this morning. And that's okay. Oh, the temperature is like perfect. I'm going to actually have a little seat here on um, a nice little bench that they provide for us around the lake. Um, and talk about Proverbs 14 um, and what I gleaned from it and that I'm still um, struggling a bit with myself. Maybe struggling is not the right word. Um, Proverbs overall is kind of defining for us, as we've already talked about, wisdom versus foolishness. And I don't think we're all one or the other. <laughs> People are complex and we grow in wisdom. That's why, you know, we even use that term growing in wisdom. Like you're never there. You're always on the way and becoming, and um, there's always more to learn, more room to get wiser. There is no other than God, Jesus. Um, there is, you know, there's no arrival point of like attaining that. And we can be wise in some areas and maybe foolish in another, hence the growing part. Um, and we can also be all foolish. <laughs> and I think that's where I, I spent a lot of time there. That's not easy to admit. Um, and maybe, well, maybe that's not com completely true. I, pro I probably should give myself more credit than that because I was seeking it. So I was getting some, but because of, and this is what we're going to talk about today, who I was surrounding myself with and what I was allowing to speak into me that's kind of christianese like what are you listening to it all matters it all adds up and when you're trying to be wise but you're surrounded with foolishness it's hard not to be foolish like and um and so when we talk about foolishness or even wisdom there's a lot of words that have gotten used um even in the Bible and in Proverbs are like good judgment, common sense. Like, well, what does that even mean? Because a lot of this, especially in today's world and with social media and fake news and even deep fake, like, so, like it's hard to know what's real or true and what's trustworthy and not. And like, what are you measuring against? And this is why my personal choice is like, well, the Bible doesn't change. And this seems to work for people for thousands of years now. And going this way seems to work for people. The people who like get it, the wise, not, there's a lot of fakers out there. And unfortunately, those people derail other people from believing, you know, there's a lot of foolish Christians out there or people, I won't even say that they're Christians and maybe we don't even need to use that label, but people that say that they follow Jesus, but it's just words, you know, they're not living it. Um, they're saying things or maybe they think they're living it, but everything that comes out of their mouth is hatred and judgment. Um, so they're even caught in foolish foolishness um so what does it really mean like what does this mean and as i was thinking of other words that we could use other than what i've already mentioned you know it's um like the lights kind of coming on a little bit or you hear people talking about different levels of consciousness or awakeness some i think foolish people are asleep so, and they don't know they're asleep. Like when you're asleep, you don't know you're asleep and you're dreaming. It all seems real. And I think there are a lot of people living at sort of that, um, a level of asleepness, asleep to the truth, asleep to themselves, asleep to wisdom. And so they don't know. And we have a lot of people in our life that we love, like this doesn't make, that's why I think in this 
it's not necessarily a good or a bad. And that's what we kind of want to, maybe our tendency is and our resistance to the word foolish, and that maybe I'm just speaking about mine, is that, well, if I, if I think somebody's a fool, I think they're bad. No, they can be very good people trying their best, um, doing their best, really like the intention is good. Because I think that's where I was. So maybe that's even as I'm meditating on this and praying about it, you know, that's I'm, I'm discovering or uncovering some of my underlying beliefs. Oh, look at this, y'all. This is a loon. Oh, he's being a little loony now. They're like swimming ducks. Um, they go underwater. They're the, sometimes when I kayak, they'll kind of um, swim with me. Oh, well, he's, he's swimming now. Oh, there he is. He's getting some uh, food now. Oh, my pinching and zooming is not where well, there he goes. If you didn't know better, and if it was a little bit bigger, it'd be like, maybe the Loch Ness monster was really a, a giant loon. Because <laughs> when they come up in their head, anyway, that's so silly. Okay, back to Proverbs and foolishness. So, um, and actually more about who you surround yourself with and the importance of it and why we struggle so much with this, or at least what I have struggled so much with, and maybe you'll relate, is, and when you start to wake up and your level of consciousness or enlightenment or wisdom, you know, those things start to develop and grow in you, um, you start looking around the people that are your people and you're like, oh boy, I really love these people, but like, how's this going to work? Like, <laughs> cause we're like different now. And I think there's a real, um, like almost like a grieving process of, of, you know, as the truth comes on with may that relationships may need to change. Not that you won't stop loving people or even spending time with people, but that the relationship might need to change in order for you to continue on your enlightenment, growth, wisdom, whatever, whatever word or label you want to use. Um, and you start to notice. And the tendency though is because we love people so much, and this is where our foolishness might still show up, is that we want to really convince people that, you know, our way is the right way. They need to know what we know. Like we're so excited about what we're learning and what's happening in our own hearts. And I think this is a perfectly natural phase to go through, but people that are growing in wisdom, probably because they've experienced that they've done that and they've learned. Yeah. That's like, that's wasting your breath. <laughs> um, but we do love people and we know their hearts and we know that there is goodness there. They just don't see it yet. They don't get it. You like when you start to get something in a new way, um, even if it's, let's, let's even put the Bible aside for a minute and our, you know, beliefs, um, in this way, but let's say you get super passionate about fitness and we all know those people, right? They just want us to like, oh, they're so excited. They feel great. They really are experiencing a lot of like wisdom in that area or growth or enlightenment, like oh, this is making such a big difference in my life. You need to do it too. And then they come at you or somebody who, like me, who has maybe put the wine bottle down or somebody who's put their cigarettes down. They've made this healthier choice. They're growing in wisdom in this area. And then they become like evangelists. Like, you've got to do the And, you know, <laughs> the the truly wise person as we grow, we realize, oh, I'm just making it worse. I'm probably making them smoke more, drink more, <laughs> stay on the couch more. I'm not really helping. Somebody who's already on that path and listening and wants that information, of course, you know, they're going to be like, yeah, tell me more. But that's what the truly wise person knows. They're, they're like, oh, when they're ready, they'll come to me. I don't need to like 
force it on them. I don't need to tell them about it. Like I can just be this different way and it will naturally attract people. And I think Christians the same way. Now, of course, we have some specific instructions in the Bible to go and make disciples. Um, but it's a very, but Jesus also role modeled how to do that. And a lot of us um, don't uh, follow that role modeling. <laughs> Let's say we go in the opposite direction. We go in the finger wagging and whatever way. But anyway, that's not specifically what we're talking about today. I got a little off track. But the point I want to, the maybe it's not even a point I want to make, but something to get you to consider if you're struggling in this in-between stage of maybe growing in an area, but maybe you have a lot of people in your life, friends, people that you really love that aren't there. They're not on that path with you. What do you do about that? And... That's a real struggle. That is a real struggle because you want to be in relationship with these people. Um, maybe you're married to them. Maybe they're family. Maybe they've been lifelong friends. So how, how do you do this without, and that is specifically when I looked at um, Proverbs 14 verses 5 through 10. It talked about mocking it talked about people that laugh at guilt, people that, um, you know, surround themselves with fools. Like we are, we have a lot of influence, but similarly, we also are very influenced easily. All you have to do is spend an hour on social media or five minutes and know that. Or if you're listening to the news all the time and taking in, um, all kinds, all the negative stuff, you're going to probably spend some time worried. We cannot help but be influenced by what we take in. And the fool, the wise person knows this and does things to safeguard or put up guards and doesn't spend a lot of time and energy being influenced or even trying to convince people that they need to come over to their side. Um, there's probably a time and place for that and maybe some limits on that when people are open to hear. So I'm not just making like blanket statements. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about me and who, who and what we surround ourselves with on a regular basis. And it can either be an energy suck and then keep you in the tension and possibly backsliding or questioning where you are now, what you're learning, the direction you're moving in. Um, because people that see you changing may not like it. They may love you and out of love and concern, they might mock, they might make fun of. Um, because you've triggered in them, oh my gosh, they're changing. They're going to pull away. Um, and what's going to happen? You're triggering a fear or maybe you're even holding a mirror up to them and they don't like it with their behavior because maybe you were drinking buddies or food buddies or lazy buddies. Like you were doing all the things together and now one of you's decided, you know what? I, I've, I want to get healthier. I want to do or or maybe, you know, just sitting around listening to dumb stuff all the time. Like somebody, one of you wants to change and they think they've learned something. And then of course the inclination for the person learning, they want to take their friend along with them. The person on the other end is like, I don't like this change. Why? And they might make fun of and mock and all those things and get you to stay the same. Like, what are you doing? Like, they, they don't want to lose their friend. There's threat. There's a threat on both sides of that equation and how you both handle it. Now, the one who's growing in wisdom will learn to accept the other one and maybe without saying anything, just naturally starts to maybe change that relationship and spending more time with people that are supporting the, the, the direction that they want to go in. That may raise you know, that person's voice over here even more like, no, don't, what are you doing? Like they might make fun of you more, um, in an effort to kind of 
get you to question, get you to stay the same. Um, and the wise person will learn this and they will go, oh, I see what's happening here. But for a while, you might not. Like you might feel just as threatened. Like, boy, if I make this change, I'm going to lose that you start to see it as a losing proposition. Like, yeah, I might be gaining this, but is it worth it? You know, you've got to weigh those pros and cons. So a lot of a lot of people will start to be on a path of wisdom and growth and enlightenment, um, and then they'll backslide, or they'll give it up, or they'll say, you know what, I. They think that they can't have people in their life that they lo that love them, that they love, and have these relationships that are comfortable, and that have been there, um, but aren't really happy with their growth or this you see it all the time, which is why who you listen to matters and finding communities. So this is the double edged sword of social media now. And it now is more than ever easy to actually find your people. It's easy to get hate and shade and mocking and laughing at. Um, but it's also very easy now to find a community of like-minded people growing in wisdom. And it's really important to plug into that because when you are swimming upstream and going against the current in your own life, and maybe you don't have a choice to not to listen to these people, you need to make sure you're like, every time you're not with them, that you're pouring in and reinforcing um, wisdom and the growth path that you're on. Um, and not backslide. It is like, uh, it's really a non-negotiable. And the wise person knows this. And there, you're also maybe listen to somebody who's down the path a little bit. If you're in the midst of this and you're like, oh, this makes so much sense. No wonder I'm struggling. And also know that if you've been the one who's done some finger wagging and like trying to convince people and judgment, like, out of love <laughs> that you were also still caught in a little bit of foolishness. Accepting something doesn't mean that you agree with um, anything. It just means that you are working with reality. Like, oh, they're not there yet. You accept them and you even learn to maybe even tolerate it at some level or not, like totally your decision but you don't spend a lot of time and energy. That's a, this is repeated so far throughout Proverbs and I think will continue to be. You don't, contend, you don't continue to waste your energy um, kind of trying to convince something that can't be convinced. They're blocked, they're asleep um, and wake somebody up. That is taking you off of your own growth path. That is a lie of Satan himself yes, go over there, try to convince them. Um, and that it will, it won't work maybe occasionally, but, and if it does work, it's not because you did something. It's because that other person's ears were open and they were already seeking. So you've got to let people kind of wake up on their own. It's frustrating. Um, and it's hard when you love somebody and you see the potential and you see them not making the choices that you think they should make, but it's not yours to make. Um, everybody's on their own journey. God gives us free will. And, you know, you need to stay focused on your own growth and what you're trying to do. We need as many people on this planet to wake up right now. Um, at this time in history, and it's uh, we're just coming out of a worldwide pandemic. The world literally seems like it's on fire. We're having like a global reset. We need wise people growing in wisdom and waking up and trusting that where seeds have already been planted and ears are opening, that they will hear you. But don't go over somewhere wasting your voice and your energy on somewhere where there it's blocked that you're just adding to the foolishness you're still stuck in foolishness just go like i don't care if anybody listens to me i don't you know like whatever i have learned but i've already been through i have been through that foolish stage and i'm sure i will be in it again because i'm human
where I will just be so frustrated because I see I'm spending time seeing the potential in somebody and seeing them start to wake up and then even when they fall back asleep or go back to their old community and their old way of being. Anybody who's spent any time around the prison ministry, oh, this is like, you, you see them get it, they're searching it, and then they go right back home and right back to their hometown because they love these people, this is where they know, but they're literally going back into the hornet's nest thinking, oh, but I'm different, I can handle it. No, that is like intentionally, uh, anyway, I could go on and on about this, but we all do it, we all do it. And it really, it's hard, which is why, You've got to be intentional. Just be so intentional about what you are putting into your mind. The sh television you watch, the music you listen to, the groups and uh, people that you belong to. Be wise. Be wise. And if you have to spend time with fools and you don't have a choice about it, love them. Love them anyway. Keep quiet. Love Bring out and encourage because you don't know what's beneath the surface of that fool because <laughs> you were a fool once too and there was there was something happening in there. So don't just trust the surface level and just be who you, God's calling you to be, be on your growth path. You just keep growing. Your light will shine naturally. People will see it. They will be attracted to it and and don't trust just the outside foolishness that you see. There could be seeds of wisdom growing and ears being opened. And we are attracted to light, just like fly, moths to a flame. We are attracted to that. So you be the flame, shine, you know, all the things. All right, I'm going to be late for my coffee. So I got to go. I love you guys. Have a great um, Tuesday. It is May 2nd third, May 3rd. Oh my gosh. Um, and where, but wherever, whatever day it is, whenever anybody stumbles across this, um, my out loud thoughts, <laughs> um, have a great day. All right. Bye.